This time I'm going to try out some more mold polishing techniques. Welcome to another episode. In the last episode I was using the polishing swabs and some paste to polish the molds. One of the things I noticed is that uh, it was polishing the molds but it wasn't really getting rid of all of the tooling marks. So viewers and some people on Facebook gave me some suggestions for other things to try. And so I'm going to try those today. Uh, the first is to use a, an air pencil, which is pretty lightweight, uh, runoff compressed air and runs up to 56,000 RPM. Someone else suggested I use a Dremel uh, and someone suggested that I use uh, Mother's mag and aluminum polish, which I'm going to try. And then another thing that uh, people suggested is that I use sandpaper, so I'm going to try that. And the final suggestion was to use uh, Mold Maker's uh, stones. I have some on order, but they're not going to get here for a while. So I'm going to do this video without trying that. So let's head to the workbench. I'm going to show you each of the methods and then I'm going to have uh, a final wrap-up with uh, final conclusions uh, at the end. So let's start with the, uh, the air pencil. I'm going to try a different approach to polishing this time. I got some uh, different pastes. This is uh, 5 micron, so it's the equivalent of about uh, 4,000 grit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try polishing it with the air pencil and some of this and uh, see how it goes. So let me put a little bit of this paste on here and I'll just do this little section there to see how it goes. And then uh, turn this on. And it's pretty noisy. Okay, let me uh, wipe this off and uh, see how it looks. And uh, what you can see is that uh, it's uh, certainly a lot easier and it's getting rid of the tool marks pretty quickly. Here's the, uh, the 20 micron. Actually, now that I think about it, I should probably put this on the uh, on the, the end there rather than uh, on the uh, the work. Whew. That's pretty fast. It goes up to uh, fifty six thousand RPM. So let's see what it looks like. You can still see the tooling marks a little bit if you get the angle just right, but um, it's a lot uh, better than it was before. So that's, that's pretty fast. So I wasn't really that happy with the air pencil. One of the reasons I wasn't happy is because um, with the, the high speed and the, the low power, I didn't have as much control over things as I wanted. Uh, and it also tended to fling the paste all over the place. So the next thing I'm going to try is the Dremel with uh, some other paste. One of my viewers suggested that I try this Mother's uh, Mag and Aluminum Polish. So I'm gonna give that a try on this mold. The other thing is I found this uh, Dremel that I had not heard of before, which is a very small, nice uh, Dremel, which seemed like it would be perfect for this. So I'm going to open this for the first time and see what this is like. Okay, so it looks like it's a paste. So what I'll do is I'll take some of this and uh, basically just push this into it and let's see what happens. Okay. 
So I'm starting with a fairly large uh, felt uh, piece. And uh, I'll keep doing this for a little while and uh, see what it looks like. Actually, what I probably should have done is done a small section of it like that and then see how it turns out. So that's just a, a tiny bit. And what I'm going to do now is, is uh, basically just scrape this away. And let me uh, actually use some solvent on this. So I have some mineral spirits. And it looks like it's already making a difference. Um, but I can still see the, the tool marks. So let me have the, at this for a little bit longer and uh, I'll bring it back after I've tried it for a little while. It turned out to be uh, a messy process, as you can see. Um, I also switched over to uh, this one uh, because I found with this one it was uh, vibrating a little bit too much. Uh, and you can see that uh, it produces a pretty nice result. Um, it's certainly getting there in terms of uh, mirror finish. It's <laughs> Hi there. Um, so I'm, I'm going to keep at it and uh, see how that go this goes. But it uh, definitely looks promising. And it's a little bit faster. Let me just show you. Actually, let me put just a little bit more on. I don't want to use much, as I've discovered. So I'm going to take a toothpick and just put a tiny dab onto here and kind of spread it in. And the idea of spreading it in is to keep it from flying all over the place, you know, which is what all these black marks here are about. I'm definitely going to have to uh, clean up my table after this. Okay, let's give that a try. And so I'm doing the same uh, back and forth motion that I was doing with the the swabs and I'm trying to be fairly light about it but uh, what you saw before was uh, just a few minutes so it's it's pretty fast to do this and I suspect I can also use the uh, toothbrush uh, with this uh, polish to get into corners as well Okay, so let's have a look. I'm just going to, oops, I just noticed this was getting out of frame. So I'm going to take this and just go back and forth a couple times. And see what the difference is. So you can see that the, the scratches are a little bit less than before, uh, which means this uh, approach is, definitely seems to be working. So. It has promise. I'm going to keep at it for this mold, and uh, or at least this half mold. And for comparison, here's the other half that I have not started on yet. So I think I'm uh, coming up with a technique that works pretty well. What I've discovered is that uh, if I use this uh, teal uh, swab, and I'm going to have to buy some more of these because this is starting to break down, uh, but that's a good way to do the, the first pass to get rid of a lot of the tooling marks. And then I can just take a piece of uh, shop towel. Uh, they, they actually suggest using terry cloth, um, but the finish I'm getting is pretty good, as you can see here. Um, so that's uh, not bad at all. That's uh, a better finish than I need. I don't need a mirror finish, but yeah, that's pretty close. You can still see the tooling marks, so there's another technique that I'm going to try, I think, in the future which is they recommend getting some uh, stones to uh, go over the, the, the metal first. And these stones or sandpaper or something like that will help get the tooling marks out. So I actually have some sandpaper, so I'm going to pull that out and uh, give that a try. 
I took a piece of uh, 400 grit sandpaper and, and cut it into a small piece and it would be easier if I took this and glued it to some uh, wood sticks. I have, to need, I have to buy some wood sticks so I can try that. But I've been going back and forth with it on here with some WD-40 to keep, keep it from clogging up. And what I want to do is, is after doing this for a little bit, bit see if those uh, subtle tool marks that I could still see um, are gone. So let me uh, wipe this off. And I don't see any sign of those tooling marks. Well, maybe a little bit, but it's pretty much gone. Now let me try some of the, the mothers on a piece of the shop towel as well. So I'm gonna take the shop towel and just dip it in there and get a, a little bit. That's probably more than I needed. But I'll go back and forth a few times to um, see how quickly it gets rid of all the scratches that I put in there from the sandpaper. And I can actually kind of feel it. And if you look at uh, certain angles, you can, let's see if I can, can kind of see it as well. It's a little hard to see in the camera, but I can see it in person. So I'm gonna go back and forth and do this for a while and uh, see how quickly that uh, does it. So this may be my new technique, which is instead of the, the swaps to use some uh, either stones or sandpaper to get rid of the machining marks first and then to uh, polish the mold. Okay, so you can see this hasn't been very long. Uh, let me get a, a clean one and uh, some mineral spirits on it. And then, uh, well actually, even without the mineral spirits, I'll just go like this and you know, see where we're at in terms of the, the finish. And uh, you can still see the scratches, but uh, it's getting a little bit smoother. So let me uh, keep at this for uh, like uh, a few more minutes. Actually, let me let me try uh, using the Dremel again and see if that uh, makes it faster. And uh, you can still see you can see the scratches in this. And you can see it's, I'm not quite as clear, but um, I think I'm onto something. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I, I mean, right now I only have 400 grit. I don't have any 800 grit sandpaper, but it seems like that's the way to do it, which is to start with it, uh, the 400 grit, because you can see there are still traces of the, the milling marks here, uh, but there aren't here anymore. I've gotten rid of that with the sandpaper mostly. And so, if I do the sandpaper first, 400 grit, then 800 grit, then the mothers uh, with the rotary tool, and then the mothers with just a, a shop rag, I think that'll give me uh, a mere finish fairly quickly in this aluminum. Uh, but, uh, ah, see, it's already getting there, but uh, with a lot less work. Yeah, and you can still see the scratch marks. I've uh, done some more polishing with uh, the mothers with the, the rotary tool and then with uh, just a uh, some shop towel and uh, this is kind of showing it at its worst but still that's uh, better than what I got with uh, just the, the polishing sticks as you can see here this is what I was happy with before and uh, it's it's nowhere near as good as, as this. This is actually quite good, as you can see. Um, I want to get, make some parts tonight, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish this as well as this other one using the sanding paper that I do have. Um, these uh, sticks here, and then actually what I realized is I haven't tried the sticks on the scratch marks. So I'm trying uh, one of these swabs uh, to see how it does getting rid of those uh, scratch marks from the sanding paper. 
And what I'm doing here is, is uh, something that I do quite often, which is I just, I like to experiment. You know, once I have something that works, I'm not satisfied. I want to see if there's a better way or maybe an easier way, uh, one that takes uh, less time or one that does a better job. And I like to try different things and, and kind of figure out what the optimal approach is for different scenarios. You know, let me switch to a, a different one. This one may be wearing out uh, because you can see I'm not getting much of the, uh, the black powder. Okay, yeah, you can see it's, it's already, I'm starting to get more of the, the oxide than I was before. So, uh, what I've learned is that these do wear out. Um, I don't think they're very expensive, so I'm going to look into you know, getting some more, as well as some uh, stones. I can tell just by looking at this that um, I'm not getting rid of all the scratches. I don't know if you can see that very well. It's kind of hard to get the light just so. But you can see scratches along this direction. But I'll keep trying for a little bit and then go back to some mothers again and, and see where we end up. Uh, the mothers do, definitely does a really nice job of giving a... Um, I mean, if I kept going, I'm sure it would give me a mirror finish or at least very close to a mirror finish. The issue is with the mothers is that it seems like you can get a mirror finish with a, uh, a microwavy surface. So that's not necessarily the best thing because it's, it's basically just making the imperfections and the features um, shiny. And I'm not, that's, that's not really what you want, which is why I want to use the sandpaper first to get rid of the tooling marks. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. There are scratches still, but these scratches I think are from the 4000 grit. So now let me get another piece of cloth with just mothers on it. Okay. So you can probably see that the scratch, the, the areas that have some scratches are now shiny. Um, again, though, this, this is uh, probably plenty flat enough that uh, when I make parts out of it, they'll look um, nice and, and clean and you won't see any of these imperfections. Uh, the machine I'm using, I'm not using really high pressure uh, for injection, so um, I'm not sure it can pick up that level of detail. Now to get in the corners there, I just take a toothpick like so, and it fairly quickly gets rid of the uh, tooling marks. So this is definitely a fast way of getting rid of the uh, tooling marks. Let's see how it looks um, by uh, cleaning that off. What tooling marks? Okay, there are still a few left like in there. But uh, as you can see, it won't take very long to get rid of the uh, remaining tooling marks. And I think what I'm going to do is for this one, I'm going to leave it unpolished. I'm going to leave it like this, and then I'm going to make some parts and uh, see what they look like when they've just been sanded. These are two sides 
of the mold that I, I polished. And uh, one of these is done with just sandpaper and the other one is done with the, the multiple methods and the, the shinier finish. And I think what you'll see is that it's really hard to tell the difference between them. Uh, and just looking at this, I cannot see which one is um, the smoother finish and which is the, the non-smooth finish. Well, maybe, actually if I look really, really carefully, I can tell that there's a difference here. So what this tells me is that to get the finish I want, uh, 400 grit sandpaper is actually pretty good. If I went down to 800, then it should be plenty good enough for what I need. So getting a uh, mirror finish with the, the mother's polish is not something that I need to do. Uh, just using sandpaper will get rid of the tooling marks a lot faster and give me a finish that I'm really happy with. So my conclusion is that the best approach is to use sandpaper followed by mother's polish if needed. So for future molds, I'm going to use 400 grit followed by 800 grit sandpaper, and I think that should be fine. And then if I need to go further, I'm going to use the mothers. Now, the other thing is, instead of sandpaper, I might use these um, Geiswin uh, stones, which I have coming. Those are designed for this type of work, but it's going to be a while before they get here. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe, comment below, and if you want to be notified of when I have a new video available after you subscribe, you can click on the bell icon next to the subscribe button below. See you next time.